one area where Michigan State loves to get that advantage, and they'll beat you on the boards, and that's where they beat you in your own game. Michigan State won the first game this year, January 17th, by four in East Lansing. After the Illini jumped out to a 13-0 lead. Ben Valentine, the referee, talking to the players, stalking the center circle. The Spartans and Illini are down to it. Ball's up, and here we go. And Illinois will get the first possession. Matt Heldman brings it up. Heldman and Johnson almost surprised one another with passes on the first position. Well, Michigan State in a 3-2 zone, so they'll match up on the perimeter, try to shut down. Don't let Illinois get a lot of good looks from behind the three-point line. Illinois trying to move it around the zone with 12 left in the shot clock. Hester's got the first look from the top of the circle. Kind of short on it, battling to get it back, and Johnson saves it. Turner for three, short. First team Johnson with the rebound. The Illini have boarded twice at the offensive end. Well, Fred, that's what happens when you play a zone, especially when you shoot from long range. You've got to match up and block off, and so far Michigan State's struggling with that in their zone. Illini missed their first two tries. G for the baseline, knocks it down, and the Illini take a 2 nothing lead. Good atmosphere here tonight. inside player. Well, Michigan State did break down Illinois' defense. You see, they came over and helped, and then, but they weren't able to steal out on, on the board, and that's why they got the offensive put back. Turner got a wide open look and knocked down a three in the Illini right back in front. Held them with the assist. This crowd is alive in Champaign tonight. Antonio Smith, G with him. Fine can shoot it. Didn't get the shot as Hester shut him down. Smith again. 13 on the shot clock. The team leads way outside. Trying to break down the Illini defense. Trying to throw it inside. Knocked loose in there. A tight four. The Illini have it. talked about Kevin Turner and if he can get it going early see the penetration by Heldman he spots up gets to the open spot knocks down the three again when a shooter gets it going and he feels it like Turner does he wasn't open there but he feels it and puts it right over the top 8-2 Illini in the early moments of this game Heldman against Cleves Johnson Turner oh they got Johnson wide open inside what a great look on the shot clock. Bell. Out on Illinois. You can see what Michigan State's trying to do. They're trying to get the basketball and penetrate. Not a great shooting team from the outside. They know that they're trying to take advantage of their quickness on Illinois. They break them down. They go in there. Johnson tries to get over there and take the charge. It just wasn't quite there and was moving. It's called for the block. What's going to happen for Michigan State? They can't pick up their basketball. You see and then try to pass it. That's the second time Cleves has picked it up in the corner. Illinois has gotten in the passing lane. King Cleves shut down by Brian Johnson at the top of that zone. The Illini by eight. That started 16 40 left in the first half. Illinois back into a 3 2 zone right now. Line shoots over it. He's one of the great shooters on this ball. Rebound to Jared G. Michigan State brought down the miss. Illinois. Four for seven. Michigan State one for three. As Bell lets one fly from the corner and knocks 
down and two. Michigan State loves to push it up in the transition. We talked about the keys. They, they go on the sideline. They don't bring it up the middle, so you've got to get people down the court. And they'll do it even on a made basket. That's how quickly they can move that ball up and down the court. Got one of your keys is Illinois getting on the offensive defensive side. And the fancy game, they're doing it. G knocks down his second two. Ball four of I-9. Antonio Smith in the corner line. Esther makes the run out. Feldman fighting for the rebound. Bill had it. Got a hand on it. Michigan State basketball. Please try to throw it inside, and the man turned his back. And, and, and you see them there tonight. They're trying to prove something. We talk about Jared G. He's a guy who always plays well in big games. Against Clemson, he delivered. Tonight, you can see he really feels it offensively. He's perfect from the field, two for two. You know, he came very close to making his first three-point attempt of his college career right there. One step backwards, be a three. Something he did pretty well in high school. Never has shot one in college. Well, as a coach for both sides, these are the type of games you don't have to worry about. You know your guys are going to be ready to play tonight. Each team is really going after each other. Ryan Johnson said he picks all over the place. He had one on Bell, got one on Cleaves, another on Cleaves, but no shot there. 17 on the shot clock. Step past G, wants to pop it, puts it on the floor instead. 10 on the shot clock. Johnson in traffic. Baldwin looking at the clock. 6 on the shot clock. And Johnson's got an open look from the circle, can't knock it down. And Johnson going for the tie-up, couldn't quite get it with Bell. Michigan State having some problems handling the basketball. Well, they're one of the teams that leads the Big Ten in steals. I mean, 9.1 steals per game, but right now they're having a hard time of handling the basketball. You've got to give Illinois credit. They're putting a lot of pressure on the perimeter. Even though they're cutting down the penetration, they're getting a hard time getting the ball inside the Michigan State Spartans are. Spartans fourth turnover. Hester takes it to the lane. Well, not on turn. Hester might want to back line in a little bit. Still no shot. Seven on the shot clock and a push. No three second violation. Illinois and I were in there too long in the first Illinois turnover of the ball game. Well, a lot of people say, well, how did Michigan State, Michigan State get to the top of the Big Ten? It's called defense. They're second in scoring defense right be behind Illinois, 60 points per game. And you can see right there, those two possessions by Illinois. They didn't get a good look. They had a lot of patience. Michigan State they stayed with it defensively, and they were very strong. And that's what they want to do. They want to get into a defensive type of contest where rebounding is a factor. Johnson and G get a breather. Chukutebe and Sergio McLean in the ball game. As the game wears on, we have a whistle in the lane right now, and that's going to be a foul on Andre Hudson. We're holding Kevin Turner up in the lane. Michigan State dug a deeper ball club than Illinois. Conditioning, mental toughness are going to play a part down late in this ball game tonight. And, and you see Tom Izzo bringing in a lot of different guys for Michigan State. He knows that this is a you know, game that takes 40 minutes the best team that plays well over those 40 minutes is the best team that plays well the first 10 or 20 minutes. Yeah, as Morris Peterson is a lot wide and off the bench right now. 14.07 left in the first half. Turner, tough shot off the baseline. Lived it, wouldn't go. Sergio McLean digging it out of there to Chuku Davey. No, McLean's got it back. No shot. Hester. Oh, the Illini hammering the offensive board. About they made that a transition, but it was off the made basket off the offensive rebound by Illinois. You can see Cleves really has that quickness north and south. Cleves has not taken a shot yet for Michigan State. Charlie Bell has seven points for Spartans and the Illini with a seven point lead. McLean's set a pick on Cleves. Back comes the picker. McLean's got it in the lane. Down he goes. In and out. Tip. Oh, good step. board right now. Listen to the crowd in the assembly hall. Bell the miss. Illinois the rebound. Sergio in heavy traffic. Knocked loose in there. Illinois ball. The Illini are going to keep it. And McLean asserting himself early. He doesn't score a lot. I'll tell you what, the tempo bumps up when he comes to the ballgame. He's got two offensive boards. You see him, he's keeping the ball alive, and this is the versatility that he provides. Even though he's six foot six, he can put the ball on the floor, bring it up on the break. 
There's a lot of traffic there, but you can see he does all the little things. Doesn't worry about scoring. That's neat to see a freshman who doesn't worry about those things. Michigan State out rebounding their opponents by an average margin of 10. The Illini have been hurt on the boards all year, but they're out rebounding Michigan State 9 to 4. And make it 9 to 5 off the Kevin Turner miss. thing about Illinois is that I mean they've, they've been just pounding the offensive boards they've got eight in by by getting that penetration the Spartans have done a poor job of blocking out you see Chukudebe come from nowhere with a great putback Doug this ball game being played the way you like to see it be played two fouls have been charged against Illinois just one against Michigan State they're playing good hard clean basketball down his first shot of the night and it's a 16 to 9 ball game. Johnson saw some daylight and got in heavy traffic down there. The ball is loose but it'll be Illinois ball as AJ Granger wound up lying on the out of bounds strike with it. Well, Illinois plays a 3-2 defense. You see Johnson steps up. They've got two guys. Again, Cleves no awareness and gets the ball to the open guy. He knocks it down. That's what Cleves can do for you. He might not score like right now. He's making adjustments, reading what he needs to do out there for Michigan State to win. Yeah, when he even quivers, he brings the defense to it, doesn't he? Sure does. Gee, muscles it up in that. Jared G has six points nearly going. That's as many as scored the whole game up at Michigan State. And at the other end, it'll be a blocking foul on the Illini. Jared G, but he had drawn the charge. I mean, you cannot turn your back on this Michigan State team. Even on a made bucket like G just made, they pushed that ball up there so quickly, and that's Cleves getting that job done. I mean, you talk about a team that runs the court hard. These guys play so hard. Look at them run out there. I mean, they're going like anything. Illinois still trying to get their bearings. Next thing you know it, they're down there trying to put the ball in the hole, and that's what makes them so tough defensively. You've got to match up and stop the point of the ball. If you don't, they will, they will get it deep like they did there. Morris Peterson, a 6'6 sophomore, one of four players out of Flint for this Michigan State team. Antonio Smith checks into the lineup, and Duan Wiley will come out of there. Now you look at Smith, though, he's, he's got some serious guns on him. Oh, boy. I mean, he is a big boy. He's the type of guy, if I'm on the other team, I wouldn't want to guard him all the time. He's got 9.4 rebounds in the Big Ten. You see Morris Peterson, he's another guy coming off the bench. He's 50% Big Ten ball. See, Smith is not a great offensive player. I mean, he struggles from the field. And you want him, he shoots 34% in the Big Ten. That's what you want. He wanted this guy shooting the shots. He shouldn't be putting the ball on the floor. He's trying to force it a little bit. He's a rebounder. He gets the, he's the garbage man for Michigan State. David Thomas, baseline. Fine. Morris Peterson, 
Anderson pleased with his first shot of the night. And I'm not too sure he got ironed that time. It might have been an air ball. Brown's going to count it as an air ball anyway. Turner is on a three. And the same two. Kevin Turner has 10 points at 20 seconds. Timeout called by Michigan State here. Player playing there. some days it seems like you can't make anything, and there's other days it seems like you can't miss. The turnovers are Michigan State 5, Illini 1. Illinois has had twice as many shots as Michigan State. And lead by 11 with 9.40 left in the first half. Charlie Bell. Well, Johnson jumped out and stopped the pass, but the Bell do a good job of getting it to the baseline. Now it's Michigan State on the offensive glass. And that was knocked back in by... Jason Klein, their 6'7 junior forward. Spartans got three cracks out at that time. That is really something they've done very well all year. Line by with the early rebounding advantage here. She's going to work with a spinning jumper short. Taken down by Antonio Smith. Cleaves is going to push it again, and he's got it there in a hurry. And he walked before he got the shot up. The basket doesn't count. Michigan State's got to be careful not to play too much out of control. When you play on the road, you, although you want to push the basketball, you don't want to lose control. And, and they've got six turnovers already in this game. You see Cleves, he's bringing them out, trying to calm them down a little bit. I think he's trying to force it a little bit out there. Not coming the way he thought it would go. Well, Davis at the point now for Michigan State. Johnson. <laughs> the lead is nine. on the shot clock. Sergio McLean is fouled by Klein as he tried to take it to the lane. If Sergio gets that ball on the extended on the wing, he sees who's got him. He says Klein, although he's about six foot seven, does a good pump fake and drive, puts it on the floor. Sergio has a lot of confidence when he go to his right, go in the go in the paint area, and looks to dish it or go up strong. Michigan State zoning the inbounds pass. She had a pretty good look in the middle, kicked it back out. 22-13 Illini, 8.30 left in the first half. Houston State moving that zone pretty well and getting out and covering the shooters so far. Hellman, penetration, back outside. Sergio, looped it in and out. And here comes Michigan State now, down by nine. And Charlie Bell with the ball on the floor, picks it up. Sergio McClain jump checking. Smith, double team and foul by Sergio McClain is first. You know, there's a lot of things you can't teach, and, and there's a good example. Although he got called for reaching, he played great defense on Bell Sergio. Put a lot of pressure on ball goes inside, and he collapses. He plays on Smith and he gets, I mean, that, that's a lot of quickness, and that's, I mean, that's what you try to teach freshmen to play defense like that. And you can see that he's been well coached. He gets in there and Substitutions, Illinois. Darius Davis in the game for the first time tonight. McLean's coming out. Hester's coming back in. G is out. Kevin Turner out. And Sergio McLean again coming back out. Near turnover, but Granger saved it outside to Doug Davis. Illinois in the zone. Spartans without some of their shooters in there. And a hand on it. Arius Davis trying to save it. Can. It's out of bounds to Michigan State. And we have a timeout here with 7.55 lead on Michigan State. I'll tell you why in a moment after we tell you to get inside the huddle of your favorite Big Ten team. Go online at www.bigten.org for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big Ten. Douglas Michigan State team, 17 straight games now. They've outscored their opponent in the second half. They shoot 42% for the first half of the year, 50% for the second half. So you better get yourself some margin at halftime and then hang on. <laughs> and, and they, yeah, they've been a late starter. There's no question about it. In the second half, they have owned that. And Illinois knows that. Interestingly, the team Claves is still on the bench, and Doug Davis still operating at the point guard. Davis, in and out. Super Davis, wrong with the rebound. Here come the Illini, still leading by nine. Johnson, 21 on the shot clock for Illinois. Kelvin, got, almost took advantage of the defensive mix-up, but Michigan State recovered. Now Hellman, 4-3. That Hellman's first shot of the night, and he knocked it down. But that was, that's what Hellman will do. If you turn your back 
allow him to knock down that three-point. And then Scotty report on him is make him put it on the floor, go to the paint. Don't let him shoot from behind the arc. Like I'll bet you he was thinking, I should have had a shot a moment ago and didn't get it. And then he came back and got it. Battle down and low. Charlie Bell at 6'3". A warrior underneath there. It's a hell ball that'll belong to Michigan State. And the team plays returning for the Spartans now. Duck Davis will come out. And Morris Peterson coming back in. Well, Bell's done a great job. As Cleves has been off the bench, you see the great entry pass from the top. It has such a hard pass, they stay with it. And Michigan State, one reason why they're leading the Big Ten is I don't think there's a team other maybe than Illinois that works so hard. I mean, they, they've been all assets of the game. Defensive and rebounding, and they keep coming at you. And Charlie Bell is 6'3", a very effective player inside. Drop the ball, picks it up. Now Cleves back in the game, has the ball, Davis with him. Antonio Smith, 15 on the shot clock. The team plays, puts it on the floor. Still has the dribble, nine on the shot clock, gets a screen, doesn't get a shot, throws it to the corner, and the shot won't fall there. Hester battling for the rebound. Antonio Smith has it up and in for Michigan State. And now the Spartans beginning to assert themselves on the boards. And the Illini had to go back and find a way to solve that again. That was one of your keys at the start of the game. And Illinois have been doing it very well up until the last couple of positions. Now Michigan State tightening up the defense. Spartans beginning to play a little better. Hester. Charging foul. First on Hester. 16 foul in Illinois. Michigan State's been whistled for just two. And Jason Klein and Hudson return for Michigan State. Well, the ball goes in on the post. Peterson does a good job of forcing Hester off the block. Then he's got to put the ball on the floor. When he does that, he gets in position. Hester tries to clear out with that left arm. That's when he gets called for the charge. Good call. Okay, I'm going to take a fouls on the Illini, not six. And just two on Michigan State. The Illini lead by ten. And now we have a whistle blowing away from the ball and Matt Hellman is caught holding Morris Peterson down there. First foul on Hellman. He's got about four or five inches on him. He, he knew he was battling there. Tried to come over the top and deny the entry pass from the top. Turner's back in. Hellman out. The Illini will zone the inbounds pass. Smith will handle. Oh, and he got a man in the scene that didn't take that shot, but now Klein kneels one from the corner. It's a two. First and second under the night for Jason Klein. He can shoot it. Turner working with the point right now. Johnson faces Antonio Smith. Davis. Johnson screen, Turner three, in and out, won't go. And rebound to Morris Peterson. Michigan State beginning to grab a little bit of the momentum here now. The Illini had it for the entire first half. And we got a whistle. A three-second violation. Michigan State turns it over. That's right, right now we got a neat matchup. You got Cleves against Turner. Turner's guarding Cleves. Cleves going Turner. You got probably the two guys right now playing the best in the Big Ten. And they're going at it right now. Charlie Bell returns the floor for Michigan State. And Jason Klein will take a seat. Klein is two for six, one of Michigan State's better shooters. Turner's the key right now. He's four for eight, two for five from three-point range, but operating at the point might be tougher to get a shot. We don't see this often. Matt Hellman doesn't come out of the game very much, so you've seen Turner move over from the two spot to the one spot. And Johnson said he picks all over the floor, but they can't free the shooter. And now an Illinois turnover off the knee of Kevin Turner. But he knows this is going to be a physical game. He's got to get Matt Hellman out of there, get him some rest, get him on the bench. The Turner's got to sort of change gears here. Don't look to score so much, but to run the offense. Third turnover, charge to Illinois. Michigan State with seven. And Hellman's going to return to the Illinois lineup now. He has checked in at the scorer's table across the way. Cleaves has picked up his dribble, and Illinois nearly forced the turnover, but Cleaves gets it back and finds Bell. Cross court, wide open, shot no, but the rebound stuck back by Antonio Smith, his fourth. And now the Spartans begin to win the battle on the boards, and they close within six of the Illini. The Illini needs something to catch a little spark here. Darius Davis, Turner, will put a move on, and the shot won't fall, and the rebound, Michigan State. 
now rebounding the Illini by two. Green dropped it down inside in the reverse good. And Michigan State roaring back. They're within four of Illinois with 3.49 left in the first half. Yeah, when you play against the Spartans, you've got to have discipline. Good shot selection. Illinois, the last two times down, has had poor shot selection. And that's allowed Michigan State to come back in their transition. And there, they, Illinois just broke down totally on defense. Let Cleves get down the paint. That, there's a foul that was about to happen, and it finally did happen. Bell has had a body on the Illini guards or a hand on them all night long. Well, they just run the court so well, and the reason they can do that is called good defense, and they block out. Peterson comes off the bench, and then he gets the ball to Cleves. Cleves, see how he keeps his head up? Always looking, looking, looking. No one stops Cleves. He gets all white to free throw line extended, and then you see Smith, Antonio Smith, even though he's six foot eight, he can really run the court well, and he gets down there. He knows where to go. The big guys, when they know they've got a great point guard like that, they get right to the block. The team might have gotten an extra step in there, <laughs> but he's so good at it that he can do it and get by with it. You just don't notice it. Spartans on an 8-0 run now. They've closed within four of the Illini. Let's see if the timeout helps. Can Illinois score off a set play coming out of the timeout? Yeah, they can. There he is. Davis knocks down a three. Yes, first bucket of the night. Big boot for Illinois. And the lead is back to seven. Now, any play they can get off the bench like that. Davis pulls up. That was a big bucket for Illinois. Now the crowd coming to life again. Hudson. Bell, the miss, and up high for the rebound, G and his foul. Well, Illinois coming out of the timeout with an answer, and that's something that you really like to see, Doug. Well, G was on the bench. He's gotten back in the ball game, asserts himself right away, does a nice block out on Smith, goes up strong, brings it down, and although there's a lot of hands in there, they get called for the foul. And that's what Jared G needs to play. Play real strong on that end and then get to the blocks. Try to get the ball in the hole on the blocks. And Illinois has got to look for him because offensively he feels it. Ryan Johnson to the hoop. Knocked loose in there and taken away by Michigan State. Antonio Smith got a hand on it. Now Cleaves. Goldman out with him. Johnson comes out to jump checking. He's picked up the dribble. He clears it. Cuts it right back to Cleaves. Now he's going to find the shot off of Smith's screen and knock it down. First bucket of the night for Mateen Cleaves. But remember, he only scored three the first half of the game at Michigan State and wound up with 27, 17 of them in a seven-minute stretch. So when he gets a rolling, he can roll. it off the glass. Morris Peterson has four points. Oh, he's got that broken wrist. You can see that he uses that glass. We're not strong there. It's almost like it doesn't really affect him. He uses that cast of wood. Goldman's three won't fall. Rebound fought for and off the hands of Michigan State. G and Antonio Smith were dueling for it. And apparently Antonio Smith touched the last. Now Jason Klein is back in for the Spartans and Bell sits down. Yeah, you see Hellman goes up, gets a good look, spots up, doesn't get it to go. G does a great job of staying with it. <laughs> and now we've got a foul on the inbounds pass. I think they got Arius Davis. On a hold, they did. So Michigan State gets it back. A minute 28 left in the first half. That will put them on the free throw line. 17 fouls on the Illini, four on Michigan State. Lon Kruger. He's done such a terrific job now in his second year here at Illinois. 39 and 17, and Tom Izzo on the other bench, third year at Michigan State. He's 50 and 32, two outstanding young coaches. Mateen Cleaves, 71% free throw shooter. A minute 28 left and a half, and this one could get the Spartans back within three. Illini led by a dozen at one time. There's Mateen Cleaves' mother watching. From Flint, Michigan. He's got them both. He has four points. Kevin Turner back on the floor. Illinois now. Arius Davis comes out. He knocked down a big three when he was in there. Now the Illini lead is three. Strong 
into the lane. Doesn't have a shot, needs help. Finds help with 17 on the shot clock. Garrett G. Giving the plane a little cushion out there, and he takes it down in the lane tough. Seven on the shot clock. G drops it down inside to McLean. Oh, good ball movement by the Illini. Yeah, great patience. Michigan State, I mean, defensively, were really sound, and they stayed with it for great ball movement. A two-man game, McLean and G. Hester knocked it loose, but saved by McLean. Peterson, airballed it, but saved by Klein to Queens outside from the top of the circle. No, and Klein grabs the offensive board with 34 seconds left in the half. Well, the problem is Heldman is Klein. He's, got, he's given up six or seven inches. This is it's tough for him to block him out, and Klein knows that. Cleaves, Klein, Cleaves, 20 on the shot clock. Line from way outside, too strong, and the Illini get it back with 13 seconds left in the half. Illinois up five with the basketball, and a 20-second timeout called by Lon Kruger. There he is now. They've got to play good, solid defense. You know, Illinois would love to get the ball to Turner, look for him to knock it down from three-point man. Great college basketball in mid-February as we head down to the end of the regular season. A battle for the Big Ten lead here in Champaign tonight. Seven left in the half, Turner. Tough shot, partially blocked. Jump shots in the first half. So we'll see if the Illini take a look down inside there. She's picked up the three buttons in the first half, but nothing inside. In fact, the Illini missed three or four point black shots off offensive rebounds. Yeah, in that was, half. It was impressive for the Spartans, too, with Smith had eight rebounds. Five of those on the offensive class. So, you know, they've got to get block him off. Don't let him get to the glass. That's where he's very effective. That's two or three things to look at. You mentioned earlier. 17 straight games now. Michigan State has outscored their opponent in the second half and shot much better than they did in the first half. They have nine guys who get in double digits in minutes in a game. They are deeper than Illinois. And the team believes has a way of taking over games when he wants to. He took only three shots the first half. So we'll watch those three things, among other things. And Gene has a wide open look off a Johnson screen but misses. Hester is in there. Got it. Six for Jerry Hester. a little more assertive here now. Turner was with him. Down to the baseline to turn around. Won't fall. Smith tips it back up and in. And again, the Spartans strong on the board. Eight for Antonio Smith. The ball goes inside. Good. Good. The Spartans do. And then they collapse defensively. Johnson comes over. No one steals Smith. And he goes to the glass. What a great backdoor look. Kevin Turner has 12 off the Brian Johnson assist. Nice look by the Illini. The team plays coming out in the second half strongly. And you talked about it in the second half. They played much more effective. I think the reason for that in the first half, Tom Mizzo gets a lot of people in there. So when they come out at halftime, they're fresh. Now the Illini do go inside to Jared G. And he's fouled. He was double teamed. And the team leaves as whistled for the foul. His first. And see, if you get the ball inside, if you don't get the ball inside, as you say, you let the, the defensive off. Let him off easy. And there, if you get the ball, as the Cleves comes over, does a good job of collapsing defensively. Thought he had the steal, but gets the arm. Line eye with a fresh shot clock. Jared G. Backs Antonio Smith to the baseline and knocks one down. Eight for Jared G. The line eye by seven as the second half is underway. The team Cleves went off in East Lansing. 17 points in seven minutes. And she has him tied up. Takes it away. They've got Hester. Charlie Bell trying to catch him, and Hester knocks him down. He has eight. And the Illini lead is back to nine. He simply took it away from him. Antonio Smith, out of shape with the dribble, got rid of it. Decline double team in the corner. Please, decline for three. And there's Bell back inside, and blocked by Johnson, and a foul is going to be called. Charlie Bell's effective in there. Well, we talk about Cleve. See how he slices through three white jerseys? He almost got the, almost had control. G comes over, does a good job, and helps out. Hester stays with it. 
stays strong, doesn't allow the quickness of Michigan State to bother him. But on this end, this is what hurt has hurt Illinois, especially on the glass, the weak side. They haven't been able to see a seal. And you see Turner and Hellman, it seems like each of those guys are down there with a guy that's six foot six, six foot seven. And they've been able to get that long rebound, the Spartan pass. State his second foul. And the Illini get it back with a nine-point lead attack. Well, we talked about confidence with Jerry Hester in the open, and this is such a tough shot. He puts it hard on the floor. Smith puts a body on him, six foot nine. He stays with it. What a tough shot. And he knocks it down. That is a very athletic move right there. Well, when he could do those one, two, maybe even three hard dribbles, goes up strong. He's tough to stop. Covered by Bell. Turner takes him to the circle. Great fake. Shot knocked down. Oh, what a move by Kevin Turner. He beat him off the dribble for his 14th point. But there's the run out to DeJuan Wiley. Well, they beat him back. That's just amazing. It drives the coach crazy when your big man out went down the floor like that. I mean, Wiley just took off. Against Bell again. Get a new shot clock. 16-28 left in this game. Long way to go here in Champaign tonight. G on the block. Turns and faces Wiley. In and out. Tough shooting luck. And Johnson on his heels couldn't quite come up with the rebound. Right back Michigan State. And a foul on Jared G. His second. Well, G does a nice job of positioning himself and he pushes Wiley out long, but then what happened was the ball goes around. He tries to reach around and gets the steal. What he ought to do, Fred, is just stay right behind him. He's done a great job defensively. Don't sell out and try to go for the steal, even though he looks like he might have got it. You see McLean and Chiku Davey checking in for Illinois. Brian Johnson, Jared G coming out. They both picked up their second foul early in this half. Thomas and Morris Peterson are back on the floor for Michigan State. And the team please catches the inbound pass. McLean at the top of the zone for the Illini. Peterson to Cleves and almost threw it away. Peterson saved it with a left hand. 16 on the shot clock. Turner trying to cover Cleves. Cleves shoves it to the corner. 10 on the shot clock. Smith back to Cleves from the corner. 4 3. Too strong. Oh, Chuka Debe. Oh, what a board. Hester in heavy traffic needs some help and finds Hellman. Good decision. The defensive pressure from Michigan State right now is strong. Illinois having to fight for every shot they get. 50 on the shot clock. Hellman. And three. Six points for Matt Hellman in the line eye up by a dozen. They've matched their biggest win in the night. And they have come out very strongly in the second half. Michigan State wants one shots in the ball game tonight. The Illini has hit five. Michigan State has hit one three so far in this ball game. That was Charlie Bell in the first half. But that's not their strength, the three-point line. They're not they play with a lot of discipline, although they, they look to shoot it, they don't take the score a lot from that point. Off the baseline, that won't go. And boy, I'll tell you what. There is a foul, and it might be an intentional foul on Morris Peterson. No intentional a foul, but he threw Matt Heldman to the deck. Tommy Valentine, the out official, saw it. He simply grabbed him and threw him to the deck. And we have time out. He knows his big guys can run the court. Do you see Wiley getting out on the break? The Illini have come out smoking. They've hit seven out of eight shots to open the second half. Michigan State answering with three buckets. The five-point lead is up to a dozen in Illinois with the 12-point lead in the basketball after the Morris Peterson foul. There you see the shooting for the game. After the 
the timeout. Illinois in the offensive set. McLean against Klein Low. 18 on the shot clock. Sergio takes it into the lane. Great fake. Wooden ball. And the ball inside the Jerry Hester. A little garbage bucket that the Illini will take it. The lead is 14, the biggest of the night. The Illini now looking for a defensive stop. There you see Minnesota up by four over Iowa. They get it deeper in the second half there. Turner with Mateen plays in backcourt. Illinois with a 14-point lead, 14 25 to play. Peterson. Split, die for the ball, scramble for the loose ball. And what do we got? Is it over and back? Illinois ball. The Illini have the possession with a 14 point lead now. Well, we talk about hustle and desire. Here's a great example. Ball goes loose. Chuto Debe dives for it. That's what you love to see from your big men. Sacrificing their bodies, put it on the floor. Good call by the official, Ted Valentine. McLean Hester. Hester faces Klein. When McLean just hit the deck. Went down again. Turner with a catch. 20 on the shot clock. Morris Peterson with him. 15 on the shot clock. Hester momentarily lost it. 10 on the shot clock. Michigan State playing tough defense. McLean with a great fake to the bucket and it won't go. And again, the Illini having some trouble finishing at point blank range. Oh, he made a great move to get there. And now Cleves blocked by Chuku Debe. But down inside, Antonio Smith blocked again by McLean, and he got it back and scored. Strong work by Antonio Smith. Well, I mean, is he a workhorse or what out there? I mean, that guy just, I mean, he's right where the ball is. If it's down in the paint area, look for Antonio Smith's number. But I mentioned that McLean and Chuku Debe having trouble finishing. I hope they keep going at it down in there. Now a hold on Jason Klein. I hope they keep taking that shot. They're going to drop eventually. Well, we talk about Cleves. He's looking to take control of, especially offensively, forces it. Chukadebe does a great job of anticipating it while he's falling down. And then again, Smith just stays with it. There's not enough white jerseys. They're all over the place. And he converts. I mean, that's where he's so strong down in that area. Second foul on Cleves. Fourth team foul on Michigan State in the second half. Two on the Illini. Four as many as Michigan State had in the first half. Illinois by a dozen. Chuka Davey to the bucket. Foul. And that's what I like to see Illinois do. They're putting the ball on the floor, getting to the hole. And the only way the Spartans can stop him is by fouling him. That's the fifth foul on the Spartans so far here in this game. Get to that bonus. That's what you want to do in the second half. The, you mentioned you wish the Illini would go inside more when the second half started. They're beginning to assert themselves in there. Yeah, Chuka Dede does a good, a good job. It's getting physical out there. You see Chuka Dede goes up strong. And if he wasn't going to get fouled, he's going to be able to finish that shot. 49-37 Illini. Helton. Turner. Low to Chuka Dede. Turn around. Jump shot. Good. Four for Victor Chukadebe. The Illini by 14 with 12, 45 to play. Please. Wiley. McLean out with him. Granger. Wiley foul. Sergio McLean. His second. Foul against the Illini, number 40, Sergio McLean. Again, Chuka Debe feels it. Granger knows he's at, he can't hold him. Reads the defense. Then he goes straight up. And that's what you try to teach your post players. And vice versa. Wiley gets it down low. He knows he's got the height and the strength against Sergio. Sergio, those great hands, gets called for the foul. Juan Wiley, a 72% free throw shooter. Brian Johnson and Arias Davis checking in for Illinois. Turner is going to get a breather. And so Jerry Hester. Antonio Smith is set to return for Michigan State. He'll replace Wiley if he makes the free throw. And Wiley, although he does not start, he plays about 20 minutes in the game. So he's one of those superstars that comes off the bench and gets time over a lot of flexibility. 
Three points for DeJuan Wiley. Now he comes out of the ball game. And Antonio Smith back in. 13 point lead, Illinois. There you see the clock, 12.30 to go. We will see the Michigan State depth will take a toll on Illinois from here on out. Elmans, Johnson, McLean. Please went for the steal, left Heldman wide open. He's got Davis wide open, three. Right back, Michigan State. Look at Blaze push it up. And dropped it to Peterson on the baseline. A fight for the basketball and a foul. Boy, that's just amazing. I mean, Davis hit the three-point shot. Most of your guys are back, especially the guards. This is what Davis can do for you. He's a great spot up. Cleese goes for the steal. Granger comes over and helps. He spots up, drains it, and that's what Arius Davis can do. But the amazing part is they don't get back on defense, and they push that ball like, I mean, I've never seen any. They're, they're probably the best in the country. But even on a made basket, they can break on it. They are just there when you look up, aren't they? <laughs> Morris Peters is free throw, too strong. The Illinois lead is 16 with 12.02 to play. Mom says make it, Morris. You better pay attention. <laughs> I think he's in trouble right now. Yeah. He's not real happy with him. Get a little pep talk. Mother knows best. Good son. That's a good son. He's still not smiling, though. <laughs> Side out to Davis for three, too strong, and Granger has the rebound for Michigan State. Where well, you get the feeling that was a big trip right there. That one could have put that large enough. At 18 points in the drop. Still 15 at the moment. Davis at the point for Michigan State. The team plays on the bench right now. Oh, what a nice look inside! And Chuku Davy has blocked Morris Peterson in the line. I have the basketball. Well, oh, what a block! to the crowd in the assembly hall. The Illini up by 15 and hunting. Davis, corner, Hellman, good for three, and the Illini roll. Nine for Hellman in an 18-point lead, and the Illini have it back. Davis, no. And a foul. Did you see the hustle by Matt Hellman? He hits the three-pointer, gets knocked down. Everybody forgets about him. Cleves gets the ball, doesn't know where he is. He comes out of nowhere, steals it, and he gets it to Davis. And this crowd is going crazy. See, you see Hellman gets to the open spot. Davis is playing really well off the bench. Knocks down the three. And the bench is going crazy. There is still a long way to go. 10.53 to play, but the Illini are on a roll right now as Arius Davis steps to the line. He has shot only four free throws all year. Well, he's almost going to double it because he's going to get three <laughs> right now. I mean, when you can get play, if the Illini can get play from like Arius Davis, Sergio, those guys off the bench, it takes so much pressure off the starters, gives them a little bit more time to recover and finish games. Right now, some of the seniors are playing some huge minutes. Seven points for Arius Davis right now. Getting more minutes off the bench tonight than usual. <laughs> to one of the three. Illinois lead is 19 with 10, 48 to play. So Davis deflected by Johnson. He can't quite save it. And I think we have a timeout taken by Michigan State on the far side. There are those who appreciate a big, juicy, char-broiled Carl's Jr. Superstar. And there are those who don't. If it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. Paradise is throwing a party. With our tropical atmosphere, the action's never been hotter.
Jean Decor dancer tour. Here you see the three-point shooting. The Illini, seven for 14, 50%. Michigan State leads the league in three-point defense. Their opponents have only shot 29% from the line, but the Illini knocking them down here tonight. 10-24 to play. G is back on the floor. Hester's back and Turner back for Illinois. And G doesn't want it in backcourt. Got some problems. Hellman needs to get it to the timeline and does to G. He's got Hester open from 10 and it's in and out. And Antonio Smith with the board and here's Cleves and here comes the run out. Cleves going at Hellman. Pulls up. Shot. Good. Cleves now has eight points. You see Michigan State now coming with four court pressure. Turner trying to dribble by it. He had a man behind him and didn't see him. Johnson saves it up to Turner. They beat the press. 20 for Kevin Turner. That was one of those. It wasn't a good shot, but then when it went in, it was a great shot. One of those, no, 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 good shot. Claims in the corner to Charlie Bell. Granger backs in on Johnson, and the twisting shot is good. A.J. Granger's first bucket of the night, and Turner at the other end takes foul to the bucket, and the foul in the bucket counted. 22 for Turner, and he'll go to the line. Well, the previous play, what they do here, they do a good job of Michigan State. That Smith comes from nowhere. Turner doesn't see him. They don't get their positioning, their spacing. Here you see Granger. Turner realizes Granger's on him. Just pulls up. Although there wasn't many white jerseys, it goes down. Tough shot. And then on the other hand, they do a nice job of looking up the court, and Turner was wide open. Michigan State didn't get back on defense. Bell was a little late. Turner stays with it, knocks it down. That is 20 points there for Kevin Turner. I think a moment ago I said he had 20. That is his 20 if he scored 12 against Michigan State first time around. Double team and a kick. It'll be a new 35 shot clock for Michigan State. Boy, they jump. McTeen plays in a hurry. Every time he, the ally and I get a chance, they double team him. 9-13 to play. Illinois by 19 points at the moment. Still a long way to go. The Illini and I have seen a lot of leads dwindle in the second half. Please shot, no, and we've got a foul under the bucket on Jared G of Illinois. And that's his third, and that could be a red flag. Three fouls on him with 9.04 to play. Jason Klein coming back in the game for Michigan State. Lon Kruger going to keep Jared G out there for right now. Well, that's what happens when you when you try to shut down the penetration. Everybody's got to help. Even the big men got to step up. And when you do that, you lose your man on the board. And that's how Smith has been successful on the offensive glass. Cleves, Granger, Klein to the corner. And a shot good from the corner. That's a three. Morris Peterson just knocked that thing down. He has 10. G at the other end. Makes a move on Granger. The spinning shot. And an out and in. 10 for Jared G. 8.39 to play. Leaves works against Turner. Jared G plumped him and fouled him. And that's four on Jared G. And now it is a problem. Fourth yeah, foul with 8.30 to play. Yeah, that was a tough foul. I mean, he should he, he, he got to get to the baseline. Didn't have the right angle, and he knows it right now. He's talking to himself. That's a tough fourth foul to get. The third. He tried to come out and help, please. I mean, that's what you want your big man to do, but he was just there just a little bit late. Well, you see Lon Kruger give him a little pep talk. Tell him, hang in there. You'll be back in there shortly. He got his fourth foul 34 seconds after he got his third. Fine. Shot short. Look at Turner. Go up and get it. He's triple team. Needs to dig it out of there if he can. It's knocked loose. Michigan State has it. Antonio Smith down low. Hester tried to block it. Couldn't. And Chiku Davey comes away with the rebound. The Illini survived that Spartan attack. And now 8 5 to play and a foul on Antonio Smith against Hellman at the mid-court line. The second on Smith. Well, that was a frustration foul. He got the ball inside. Thought he got fouled when he went up. Stayed with it. There you see Tom Izzo telling him, hey, you got to get the ball in a little bit deeper. Put that ball on the floor. Read the defense. Not a smart, not a smart foul by Smith. Matt Heldman will go to the line. An 89% free throw shooter. Second foul on Smith. Heldman at the line. One and one. About as good as anybody in the conference or the country. 85% career free throw shooter. 
second in history at Illinois, only to one of the assistant coaches, Rod Judson. Well, Matt shoots them the way that you, you're supposed to shoot them, the way they did it way back. Yeah. And he, he steps up, you can see every time he goes up, he feels so comfortable. Almost jinxed. Oh boy. <laughs> Down it goes, and the Illini lead is 20. The biggest lead of the night, eight minutes to play. The team flees. Down to the baseline, Morris Peterson, and a charging foul. The Illini get it back, up by 20 with 7.56 to play. Ken Johnson gets, this time he gets the, gets the right angle, Peterson goes straight up and gets the charge. Tory, and over 60 customizable reports that put you in control. I'm a gas <laughs> journalism major, would be my guest. <laughs> the crowd loves it. They're having fun in the assembly hall right now. Long Trigger would say, hey, there are eight minutes to go. There's no much fun. I mean, as a player coming home, place is sold out, crowd's into it, you're into it. And this is what the Big Ten's all about. This is an emotional basketball game. It's a good basketball game. Illinois playing very well, up by 20, trying to pull into a first place tie with Michigan State in the Big Ten. Johnson finds Hester with the inbounds pass. Hester's going to take it against Klein one-on-one -on -one and beat him to midcourt. Then hand it to Turner, who's in trouble, and threw it away. Had to get rid of it. He's going to fall over the 10-second line. Michigan State gets it back. Cleaves, double team by Hellman and Johnson. They're trying to make him pick up the dribble, and Cleaves is going to throw up a shot instead. And off the miss, Chuku Davey with the rebound. Wants help, finds it. For three, on the deep side will go. Chuku Davies there. He's got it. He's fouled. Count it. An emotional bucket for Illinois. He finished that one. Well, he had a huge game against Michigan a couple weeks ago. You see him come off the bench and play some monster minutes when she got in trouble. They do a good job of reversing the basketball. Turner gets a good look, doesn't go down. But look how active G, I mean, Chuka Debe is. He stays with it. And when he could come off the bench and provide that production, that helps the front line, takes the pressure off of Johnson and G. Chuka Debe has eight points tonight. Excuse me, that was the seventh point of the night. 23-point lead for Illinois with 7.04 to play. Leaves against Turner. And a foul down inside. They got Jerry Hester on the hole. His second. Michigan State has committed 10 team fouls in the second half. Illinois. Now we're limited at 7 now. It'll be a 1-1. One and one. For Jason Klein, who's a 71% shooter, he has four points so far tonight. A 6'7 junior from Gross Island, Michigan. They might not have four players in double figures in this game. Jason Klein has five. That's a big rebound. Morris Peterson with the shot won't fall, and Chuka Davy has it. With G on the bench, Chuka Davies picked up two big rebounds and a big bucket for Illinois. Hester. Johnson. Heard it on some clock right now. 6.38 left in the game. Kevin Turner working. In traffic. Gives it up outside to Hilton. Now 13 on the shot clock. Johnson. And a look. Puts it on the floor. Eight on the shot clock. Hester. Throws it inside to Johnson. Oh, what a look. Four for Johnson. 24 point lead to Illinois. And a foul on Illinois. What a great look. Oh, I mean, he, they just stayed with it. I mean, that was, I mean, Tom Izzo, Illinois can't play any better here in the second half. They reverse the basketball. The clock's running down. Johnson screen and rolls. Your man leaves you, a big man, you go to the hoop, and that's what Johnson does. That was a tough pass by Heldman. He had two guys all over him. I don't want to throw up a red flag here, but G's on the bench with four fouls, and that's three on Chuku Davey now. Andre 
Andre Hudson, who has not scored tonight, misses the free throw attempt. Michigan State, four for four at the line in the first half. Peterson had a hand on that rebound, and it's going to be Michigan State basketball. The Spartans continue to go to war on the boards. Illinois by 24 with 6 11 to play. And somehow you have a feeling this thing still isn't over, don't you? Yeah, you think Michigan State's got another bullet for Chamberlain. He's just waiting to, to fire it. Bell finds that and it won't go, and Turner chases down the long rebound. And here comes the Illini eye up 24, six minutes to play. No time to relax for Illinois. We had talked about the Michigan State Dev. Turner shot won't go. And here come the Spartans in a hurry. Mateen Cleaves is going to push it. He may pull up and just shoot it right there. Left hand block by Brian Johnson. Cleaves thought he was fouled. Johnson picked it clean. And here come the Illini back with 537 to play. You know, it's amazing here in the second half. Johnson, wherever Cleaves goes, he leaves his man and comes over and helps out helping. Johnson fouled Jerry Hester, his third. And the Illini have some foul problems. Sergio McLean and Arias Davis are coming back into the game for Illinois. Doug Davis is coming back, replacing the team Cleaves for Michigan State. Cleaves is going to the bench with 5.29 to play. Again, Peterson gets, gets the right angle there in that arm. When he puts that arm out and he pushes out, the, that's when he gets called for the offensive charge. You can't do that. You're getting the edge. Get the advantage, and they'll call that every time. Jared James back in the fourth. Illinois Chiku Davey came out to a great ovation. Davis, who was replaced, please, throws it down inside to Hudson. Now Morris Peterson. Charlie Bell, Hester, able to shut him down. Good defensive footwork by Jerry Hester to stop Bell. Davis takes it in the circle, throws it up, and misses, and balls on the floor, snapped around. A.J. Granger saves it for Michigan State, fires a shot that won't fall, and Hudson gets it back. The Spartans are going to get another crack at it. That one won't go. Granger with a dip, and he may have pushed off. He did. No, he didn't. It's going to be against Illinois. Granger reacting to having missed the shot. Well, they're pounding the boards, but they haven't scored since the 8.55 mark. They've had a drought here almost four minutes. They haven't been able to put, they've gotten to the free throw line and they've struggled with the Spartans yet. They haven't been able to convert. They're starting to command the boards. They, they hold the edge 32 to 29. Second foul on Jimmy Davy and Rich Myers of Bracers going to check into the game for the first time tonight for the Illini. 54 to play. Granger will shoot two. With Illinois leading by 24. Here comes Rich Myers onto the floor for the Illini now. The 6 8 freshman from Shelbyville. Jared G is going to go back and get another breather with those four fouls just in case they need him down the last couple of minutes. Listen to the hand for Jared G as he comes out. And this fires, kept it alive, rebounded in the history. 448 to play. Sergio McLean, Arias Davis. Why I have 22 on the shot clock. They won't be in a hurry here. And we have a foul down away from the ball along the baseline. Against Illinois, not what they want to do. They got Rich Byers. That is not why they put Rich in the ball game. They don't want to get it back to Michigan State with no time. You know, on the clock. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do is, is foul on that end. Not only, it's almost like a turnover. You stop the clock. They get to the free throw line. If they make their free throws, you know Michigan State's going to throw a press at them. Morris Peterson, three out of four at the line with 10 points in the game. 73-50 Illinois with 4.35 to play. Spartans having trouble at the line. They were four for four in the first half, now six for 13 in the second half. Turner and Johnson on the bench right now for the line. And she, Peterson, knocks the second one down. The Illinois lead, 22 points with 4.30 to play. Elman to Hester. McQueen to Davis. Team Cleaves on the bench for Michigan State. Hester in the lane, pump 
fake shot. Won't fall, but he's fouled. Yeah, Hester has been very effective. What he does is that there's, there's a down screen. He knows his man is following him, so he'll curl off that screen. And when he does that, the point guard's not putting enough pressure on him. Defensively, they are. And then that entry pass is going in there. And then Hester, once he gets that ball in that spot, at six foot six, he's so strong, he give a pump fake. He either knocks it down or gets to the free throw line. First foul by the Big Ranger, Jerry Hester with 13 points tonight. Now Mateen Cleaves comes back from Michigan State and Davis sits down. Yeah, the one thing about Hester, he hasn't had the big games, you know, like the 28-point games, 25-point games, but it seems like you look at him, you can just book it every night. 15, 16 points a game, eight, maybe even nine rebounds a game. Four ball to play. Illinois by 24, Mateen Cleaves. Reyes Davis defends him. for three and the Spartans are not going to give up on this thing AJ Granger with six points now so a 21 point lead to the Illini with 355 to play and a throw away McLean cuts the bucket Jerry Hester threw it behind him out of bounds Michigan State gets it back still 21 for two but a win here in Illinois will be 10 and 2 so will Michigan State with Purdue right behind him and then Illinois with a tough finishing schedule at Purdue on Saturday Northwestern here Wednesday Iowa at home the following Sunday, and then at Indiana to finish it. Yeah, and then at Indiana, that's senior day. When you're a player in the Big Ten, oh you don't want to play on anybody's senior day. Michigan State, final schedule. Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Purdue. And now, Area State has got some foul. The and I are doing the things they don't want to do down the stretch here. Yeah, I mean, they've played so well. They've played under control. This second half, I don't think they can play it any better. But you don't want to be following the Spartans and putting them on the free throw line and stopping that clock. The clock is your enemy right now. The team plays 71% shooter, has eight points tonight. The Spartans can't knock down a free throw here. Now, Illinois has won six straight in the Big Ten. The last time they won seven was in 1984. Do you remember anything about that? <laughs> yeah, that was a special year. We tied for the Big Ten with Purdue. They've got a couple tough road games here, but the one thing about Lon Kruger, he seems to come up with, with those big road games. I could see him maybe giving Indiana or producing problems. And I beat the press, 3.30 left in the game. Michigan State has an eight-game winning streak right now that's about to be halted, it looks like. The clock continues to tick with 3.22 to play. 15 on the shot clock for Illinois, and Jerry Hester, punt fake in the lane, he's fouled. And a little line with 317 to play. Yeah, Michigan State hasn't been able to take that away from Jerry Hester. Hester loves to curl in there, and once he gets that ball in the paint, they've got to force him out. What you do is you go over the top of the screen, force Jerry to the three-point line, make him beat you from the outside. Don't let him get the ball in the paint. I'll tell you what, the Illini really are not a great free throw shooting team. But you can see the experience down the stretch. They have had games where they've made a bunch of them down the stretch, haven't they? You know, in the last four or five minutes of the game, they've become a terrific free throw shooting team. David Freeman checks in for the Illini. Here comes Jerry Hester on the ball game. Let's see the hand. Standing ovation in the sellout crowd of the Assembly Hall for Jerry Hester. David Freeman from Champaign, a 6 4 senior and a very popular player. Sir Joe McLean comes out. Bobby's story is in. Byers is on the floor. Davis is on the floor. Hellman, the only starter, still out there. 3-10 to play. Cleaves. Defended by Arias Davis. Michigan State not in a hurry. That's fine by Illinois. Cleaves with a spin move. Knocked out of his hand. Picked up. And he was trying to find a chase it down. I believe his last touch by Michigan State. It was. It'll be Illinois ball with 2.53 to play. A rather stunning victory for Illinois here as they close this out. Now Giovanni Bolin is in and out Giovanni comes Bolin. Matt Hellman. <laughs> have the luxury of having all their starters on the bench to watch the end of the game that puts them in a first place tie in the Big Ten. Uh, it's about defense. Right now they've got them down to Holding Michigan State to 55 points. They lead the Big Ten around 59 a game. 
Talk about defense. You play defense in the Big Ten, you're going to be successful, and Illinois has done that. Darius Davis. Both teams now have their sons in here at the end of the game, with the exception of the team that leaves for Michigan State. There's Davis, an off balance jumper, and he knocked it down. Good night for Arias Davis. He has nine points, and the Illinois lead is 24 with two and a half minutes to play. Curious to see if the crowd starts to leave or sticks around to celebrate. I've got a feeling it's going to be celebrate. Plays with a terrific lob that won't fall. Well, Morris Peterson almost made a terrific conversion of that lob with a backhanded tip. Roleen kicks it right back out. Avi Story is going to fire it. Freeman with a tip try that won't go. And here come the Spartans with 2.04 to play. Mateen leaves. A.J. Granger spots for a three that goes. You know, he's only hit two the whole season. He's popped two right here in the second half. 1.52 to the end of the ball game. Lonnie Boleyn to Avi Story. With a stunning margin of victory over Michigan State here tonight. Story. Twelve on the shot clock. Bobby Story takes it in from out front. Well, there it is. It's the night for the Illini. Off the glass for two from out front. Davis tried to answer. Short with a try. Story grabs the rebound. A minute 19 to play. The Illini have put it away. They lead 81 to 58. Cleves able to strip it and this is it. Gets it back all alone and finally got the shot down. 11 points for the team, please. Both sides. I thought I'd see this tonight, that Dalton Burger. Well, I had a feeling this team was a little upset after that first East Lansing. And they were, I don't want to say revenge is the right word, but they were looking for a payback. Well, an obvious story. Stops the clock with 55 seconds to play. A lot of the crowd leaving. Most of them are going to stick around and celebrate. Illinois will go to 18 and 7, 10 and 2. Michigan State will be at 17 and 5, 10 and 2. Yeah, when you look at these two teams in December, both of them sort of struggled with their chemistry and what everybody's role was. But in the Big Ten, I mean, they have played terrifically. And Michigan State, although they've stubbed their toe tonight, which is tough, you're going to happen on the road in the Big Ten. You can't run them off. They've got a great schedule down the stretch. Points Doug Davis, 55 seconds to play, 81 62. Play out the final seconds of the game. Freeman to story. Davis down low. Get a shot, David Freeman. And now foul on Rich Myers with 39 seconds to play. His second. Two teams pick to finish down toward the bottom of the Big Ten, playing for the lead right now. Purdue probably watching. Very yeah, happy with the line. Line. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the rest of the Big Ten is looking at this like, you know, someone had to give Michigan State a loss. The way their schedule works out, they don't have a lot of tough, they don't have any more tough games on the road, and they get Purdue at the end of the season at their place. This is Ken Miller. Well, Illinois is going to win the battle for the Big Ten lead tonight. The reward? They get to go to Purdue and battle for it again on Saturday. And a tie in the lost column with the Boilermakers. And that's a tough game for them. And they don't match up very well with Purdue. Miller seems to have to get stronger and stronger. Here we come down to the final seconds. Look at the Illini bench. Look at the crowd in the assembly hall. They're on the feet and roaring for the Illini and the effort they have put out here tonight. Out of bounds with 14 seconds to play. The crowd giving this team a standing ovation. Lon Kruger has to be happy, has to be happy with the effort this team has given him here tonight. Yeah, I don't think Illini could play much better than they did tonight. Handled the ball, shot extremely well, played stifling defense. Ticking down, seven seconds 